Good morning. Welcome to New Life Ambassadors for Christ Christian Church live stream on Facebook of our morning worship services, our Sunday morning worship services. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. We have just a couple of announcements before we get started with the uh, invocation. We want to remind you that this is Holy Week coming up. And so we here at New Life are, are going to lean into Holy Week. We want people to really think about what it is that the Lord has done for us. And so we're looking at this Palm Sunday as the start of our Holy Week. On Wednesday, we will be having our regular prayer on our conference line. We've sent that out to you all. Hopefully you've gotten it by email or by uh, Remind. And we want you to join us at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and or 6 p.m. for prayer as we think about what the Lord has done for us, as we draw closer to him. You have to think, what did he do for me? Amen. So that will start at 12 noon and we'll go until we're finished. We know he hung on the cross until about 3 p.m., at least three hours, but we won't go that long if it doesn't take that long. And if it takes that long, so what? We have an eternity to spend with God because he hung on that cross. And then we're going to have a wonderful Resurrection Sunday morning. Easter Sunday is what they call it. They call it Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We're going to have that, and that's going to be at our usual time at 1015, and we're so looking forward to our senior and founding pastor, Michael H. Brown. He's going to bring the word as the Lord gives to him for us. And because we know the Lord has done such great things for us, we are not going to have live streaming that Sunday. So you tell all your friends, we're not going to live stream on Easter. Because Jesus didn't live stream to save our souls. Amen. And so we're asking you to come. Come on out. While, it's, while the coronavirus levels are low, come to service. Bring your mask. Sit as far apart as you can, but come anyway. Because if he had not come, we would not be saved. Amen. And so we're not going to have it that, that Sunday. And we thank God for even having that insight and having Pastor Mike say, yeah, that's right. We're not going to do that. You come. We miss you. We love you. You come. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're, we're planning a, a new life. Everybody come Sunday. Not just for Easter, but we have a special Sunday plan. The first Sunday in May, we want you to come back. And come and join in, like the scripture says, not forsaking the gathering of yourselves together as some folks do. But we're not just some folks. We're Christians who are following after Jesus. And we want you to come on the first Sunday in May. And we're asking our members to come and, and wear a mask, come in person, of course. And uh, we want us to renew our relationships, our spiritual relationships. Refreshments will be served after that service. And uh, light refreshments. So if you plan to attend, we want you to come and um, come back. But we also want you to text this number and let us know that you're planning to attend. And that number is 313-303-1975. That's 313-303-1975. If you plan to attend, we just need to plan so we have enough refreshments for everyone. We will announce this again, and we look forward to having you be there on that remarkable 
first Sunday in May. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, this is Palm Sunday. We got some palms out and we're waving them and hopefully throwing them down at Jesus' feet. Hopefully we're bowing our hearts down at Jesus' feet like they did on that day. Amen? So I want to read from the scripture related to uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 6. I know usually we read a short scripture and pray. I'm just going to read this one to prepare our hearts for the rest of the Palm Sunday uh, service. Verse 6, New American Standard Bible says, and he would stand with me, I appreciate it. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their coats on them. And he sat on the cloaks. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Now the crowd was going ahead of him, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest! And when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? Lord, we thank you that we know who he is. Mm. We're just remembering the events and what happened and how it happened. We, we know you, Lord, because you made yourself known to us through your son, Jesus. Because your Holy Ghost came in when we said yes to your will. We said yes, we confess with our mouths. We believe in our hearts that you raised them from the dead. You came in and we know you because of that and we're so happy. We ask the Lord to bless this service as we continue to worship you, praise you, remember you, think of you, commune with you. You're a wonderful God. Mm, mm, mm. Ain't nobody like you, Lord. And so we thank you, God, for being with us in this service, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us read together our scriptures for the month of April from Romans chapter 6. Verses 8 through 10, and Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. Let us read. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. And you know what? We know we're going to do that because he lives. Amen. Let us lift our voice this morning. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know.
like to go. Holy is the Lamb, hallelujah. Precious is the Lamb, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, sing the Lord.
church. I just yeah. really enjoyed it the last Amen. Yeah. We want to continue to have enough time to do all that they're going to do in their studies for the Lord. Amen. And that's going to be remaining, those remain in the sanctuary to follow their hearts with me as we corporately come together and pray to God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we bow our hearts before you. We bow down. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory. You are the preeminent one. You are the omniscient one. You are the one who's everywhere at the same time. You're God all by yourself. Ain't nobody like you, and we praise you. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for showing us how to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for your word, your spirit, your soul. We bless your holy name. Lord, we have offered up many prayers before you, some very personal and some that are for others. And so we know that you have heard us because your word says that you hear us. And that when we draw near, you will in no wise cast us out. And so we thank you, Lord, right now. We're just thinking about that, praising you, that we can trust you to be there for us. To have our back, our side, our front, our feet, and over, and that there's nowhere that we can go that you're not there. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for answered prayers. And we thank you that your timing is always right. And so we praise you for that right now. Lord, we want to lift up those who have different afflictions, different tests, different concerns. We lift up those who are greedy. We pray for uh, Renee's neighbor, Steve, and the loss of his father. We thank you, Lord, that you are with him and that her prayers and her words have been a comfort to him in your name. We thank you, Lord, that there are so many others all over the world who are suffering, but they are calling on you. They're not turning their backs on you. They're looking up to you. You're the author. You're the finisher our faith, especially this holy week for those who, of us who are Christians, Lord. We look to you. We look to you, Lord, and we praise you. Thank you, Lord, for providing food, clothing, money, heat, housing, water. We thank you, Lord, the basics of our life and relationships, connectivity. Somebody's letting somebody know that they are thought about and cared for. Because of you. Because of what you have done for us. And so this Palm Sunday, as we remember you coming in on that triumphal entry, Lord, your triumph is that you came. So you left your home in glory. And you came all the way from heaven down to, just to save us. And when they had contracts out on your head, God, you didn't hold back. You did not go. You went right on in. And you met what you had to met. Because you know we needed it. So we thank you, Lord, today. We give you praise for your spirit. Hey, son. We thank you, Lord, for your love and kindness. It's been our life. And we ask you, Lord, to let us do all the things you have commanded us to do. Love one another. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. Lift up one another, oh God. Help us to be that church without spot or wrinkle. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we're looking forward to the word today, and the next speaking voice that you hear will be that of our own Deacon David Keel. And so after uh, the hymn to prepare our hearts, then we will hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. God be the glory for the things that he has done. We have a moment with you this morning. If you do, just raise it up. <clears throat> and say, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank, you, Lord. Lord. thank you, Lord. There's a reason for to give thanks. Amen. 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 So we just wave that and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. And if you feel there's a reason for you to thank the Lord, as I've seen. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your palms. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
think about that and uh, I'm uh, asking this, uh, as we think about this week, there's a lot that went on this week and we don't want to undermine or negate how significant this week was. Yeah, you know, yeah. We bother to look forward to just Easter Sunday and a lot of us look forward to Easter Sunday without the notion of the resurrection. They just look at the monetary things or things that can that they're expected to get from from uh, from Easter Sunday, yeah. and that's just human nature. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as as we go on in the scripture about our human nature, yeah. how our selfishness and that flesh in us just we want to satisfy ourselves, even the spiritual things we try to satisfy ourselves. So um, we talk about Palm Sunday. This kind of, uh, we talk about the the triumphal um, entry into Jerusalem. Yeah. And and when I mean, you look at this this uh, this uh, welcome that Jesus was given at that time, it signifies a few things. Number one is that <clears throat> they all knew Christ as the Messiah, and that was in Psalms 118, 25, and 26. Right. And that they recognized that Christ was the King. Yes. Yeah. And that also was in uh, 7, 7 Kings 9 and 13. And they all honored him as both king and Messiah. Yeah. And that's in Zechariah 9 and 9. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you think of Palm Sunday, it's just not any Sunday. This right here has been in the making for a long time. This has is, is, is been prophesied right. in the Old Testament all the way up until this day yeah. that uh, the king is coming. All right, now. The king yeah. is coming back. Yeah. You know. And, and uh, it's nothing uh, to be taken lightly of. So they've been looking for this day. And they've been, uh, now when I say they, um, they have been looking for this day. And this is the Jews and the Greeks and the Romans. All are familiar with the scriptures. All right now. Okay. Now if they believe them, that's another thing to be said. But they have, they are familiar with the scriptures. <laughs> <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about the triumphal triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Amen. So it's Palm Sunday, and many of the churches they'll have the youth just have youth come, and they might have a banner of Jesus, and they and they, and they walk in and they put palms and stuff down. And it's just to visualize, give you a visualization of what people experienced that day. Um, and what we want, what I want to do this morning is focus on the understanding of why Jesus did what he did. Amen. So <clears throat> I, I want to give you some scriptures too, and hopefully you can write them down. And this will be, I guess, a homework assignment. Amen. <laughs> so I'm going to encourage you to read them during this, this Passion Week by looking at these passages. So it can put you in the right frame of mind with all the things that happened this week. But Matthew 26, chapter 26 to 28, Mark chapter 11 through 16, Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to Luke 24, chapter 24, and then you can look at John 11. So if you would take, a, take any of those passages, or, e or even all of them, and just begin to let them meditate on your heart throughout the week. So after you have read them, allow the story of Jesus, of what Jesus was doing on earth that week, coming to Jerusalem, going to the cross, and then the resurrection. Uh, we'll get this, we'll get those verses, I mean those chapters will get our hearts ready for the coming, for the coming weekend, and that is the resurrection Sunday. All right. <clears throat> so one of the things that happens is that we have a bit of a celebration today. It was a great worship this morning, a great opportunity for us just to celebrate that Jesus has come. Yeah. And next Sunday, we're going to celebrate his resurrection. But if you miss the middle part of the week, you miss the significance of the week, and you miss the fact that Jesus came for a reason. Right. Yes. He came yes. to get us out of our darkness out of our sin, out of our angst as humans against God, that we might be with God yeah. and God might be with us. Mm -hmm. All right. And we would have peace. Yes. Yes. Amen. 
So I just want to make sure that you enter into the fullness of the week so that you have, that you see Jesus for what he does today coming into Jerusalem and then understand the dark week that he goes through yeah, amen. to get to the darkness of our own hearts so that he can save us. Wow. Well, amen. So we're going to start with John. And we have to remind ourselves why John is writing this story of Jesus coming to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And often in the Gospel of John, we come back to John chapter 20, verse 30. Okay. And it says, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with this. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, mm -hmm. which is not written in this book. Mm -hmm. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that by believing you may live life in His name. All right. So yeah. this this is about the life in Jesus. Mm -hmm. The whole essence of the Gospels is that Jesus coming and is about having life in God. Yeah. It's about the life of God of God entering into our humanity. Mm -hmm. So our death came by Adam. <laughs> So we might live. So in the process of understanding the triumphal entry of Jesus, we want to be solid in that understanding that the gospel, what the gospel is doing. In John chapter 12, verses 12 through 15, it says, the next day a large crowd came to the feast, and he heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So he took branches off palm trees, and they, they went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, and it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. And that was John's narrative of the triumphal entry. <clears throat> so now I just want to give you marks narrative. And as I said earlier, each, each one of these uh, Gospels, they all have a version of this triumphal day. Yeah. So hopefully this week you can read on your own and look at, look at some of those. But um, in Mark chapter 11, beginning at verse 1, now when they drew near to, Jeru to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and, imme and immediately <clears throat> as you enter, you will find a coat tied to which no one has ever sat. Mm -hmm. He said, Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks you why you are, are doing this, say, The Lord is in need of it, is in need of it. And I would send it back immediately. And when they went to went and found that coat, they tied it. It was tied at the door outside of the, the street. And they uh, united it. I'm sorry. And they untied it. And some of uh, some of those standing there said to them, "What are you doing untying that coat?" <laughs> and they told them what Jesus said to tell them. And and they let him go. And they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it. Um, and many spread the clothes to the, the clothes on the road, and then spread leafy branches, and they they had cut down from the fields. And those went before him. I'm sorry. And those went before him. Those followed were shouting, Hosanna! Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Blessed is he. Yeah. Is blessed is the coming of the kingdom of the Father David in the highest. Yes, amen. Can y'all repeat that with me? I just want you to get the feel for the crowd that day. It amen. was rejoiceful yes. that yes. the king has come. Yes. So help me out. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our father David. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. So, and, and he entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. I'm going to say that again. He went
went to the Jerusalem and went to the temple. And he looked around, and he, and he was already uh, late. He went to Bethany with the twelve. So before I even go in there, so give you kind of kind of say so um, mindset. When Jesus sent his two disciples, two um, disciples to to uh, I'm sorry, Beth, Beth Page to go get the coat. It was actually in the other direction of going to Jerusalem. Oh. Yeah, so he had to go out of his way for about a mile, right, to go get it. And then just puzzling or mystery. How, how did Jesus know that there would be a coat? Told him where the coat would be. Huh? All right. And that what to say to the person and to retrieve the coat. I talked a few minutes ago about things that he did that wasn't even written in the book. Those right. are the things Amen. that you want to think about Amen. that he was able to do. You know. The other thing is, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, also, when they were preparing to go down to the, um, to the, um, get the coat and, and get it, when I said he went out of the way to get it, it was the reason why Jesus even went to get the coat. All right, now. Went to get the donkey, mm -hmm. right? This was prophesied. All right. It would have been easy for Jesus to walk right down to Jerusalem. All right, now. Say that. You Say know? that. Hey. Well, no, he wanted to go and do it according to the prophecy. Yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. So, All right. some other things that was mentioned here, back in the day, and I'm sure they do it now, when you have kings and, and priests and people dignity come to your town, usually what happens is your mayors and your high priests, and they go meet that person. They go greet that person and they bring them to town and kind of like show them off and try to show them their town and that type of thing. Uh -huh. But the priests didn't do that here. That's right. Uh -huh. They didn't do that. They didn't go out and meet and greet Jesus. Well, all right. but king. The king. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. All right. So those chiefs and those priests and those Pharisees they heard what the crowd was saying about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And what they would say yeah. is, Hosanna in yeah. the highest. Yeah. And yeah. they were screaming and they were shouting. Yes. And yeah. in their hearts, they knew yeah. who Jesus was. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't want to they didn't want to yeah. proclaim that. They didn't want to accept that. Yeah. Kind of reminding yeah. some of the things that go on in today's world. Yeah. When people get in power, yeah. they don't want to let it go. When yeah. it's time to step down or it's time some of that nature, they just want to hold on to it. All right now, huh? Talk about it. God don't have his way. Yes. So, Jesus knew that going in. Uh huh. Almighty God that we have. And I say that because um, he knew that going in. But the, the chiefs thought they would slip. You know what I'm saying? They was like, I'm going to get one on Jesus. You can't pull one over. Oh, God. Jesus? Huh? His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our ways. Just give you a little history. 
I don't want to say fire or fire. He, he, he met them at their own game. And with that said, Jesus, all these different things that he's been doing before he came to this Palm Sunday, this man, he's been doing it, I don't want to say in secret, but he's been doing it not openly, openly. Okay? So he would do a miracle here, this there, and he wouldn't grandstand and tell everybody, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. But when he comes to Jerusalem, all right now. This is where he's going to be open. Mm -hmm. And he knows he's going to say, I am mm -hmm. who I say, who they say I am. Yes. And he's going to be, he's going to make that announcement yes. Yes. in front of thousands yes. of people. Yes. Not small villages, yes. Yes. but thousands of people. Yes. Yes. And the history of the Passover, and I'll get to that in a few minutes, of why all the people was coming to Jerusalem. Be the name of the one who comes, and blessed be 
the one who comes in the name of the Lord, but by that Friday, mm -hmm. they chose to crucify him. Yeah. They chose this word, let the blood be on us and our children. Mm -hmm. So, I find that so interesting that this phrase that they use, Jesus redeems this very phrase and he makes a prophetic word. It's and because it is in the blood that covers all of us all right. of our children. Yes. It is the very blood that we are saved. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So as we think of this triumphal entry into Jerusalem, let's just get a, front, a, a frame of mind of Jerusalem at the time and, and what they were what they were going and going through mm -hmm. and the crowd. And the crowd, first before we, we talk about Jesus riding the donkey, but Jerusalem is a place, is a place, um, they say there's about twenty to 30,000 people in Jerusalem at that time. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, it was the week of Passover. And pretty much, if you don't know, what, what Passover is the, is the celebration, and then in four, four days, you have a sacrifice on the fourth day. Okay, which is usually the way of at that time. Mm -hmm. So, so with this week, um, during this week, with, remember they only had like 20, 30 uh, thousand people. They were expected 80 thousand people showed up from all over to all this right, region. All right. You know. So, but you got to also understand if that 80 thousand people in Jerusalem, all of these uh, Jewish people had, had had come out, but in 63 BC. Like um, six decades before that, the Romans had taken over Jerusalem, the uh -huh. city of David. Uh -huh. So and now there was no independent Jewish state. So now, uh, out of the eighty thousand people uh, who have been kind of withered under the oppressive rule of the Romans for multiple decades, they've been uh, beginning to to have unrest in them. They have this angst in them. They have this anxiousness in them about being oppressed by a ruler. All right. So, but this is what's going on, and uh, they're just not—they're just frustrated with what, what, who is leading them, and because they are no longer independent state, they are no. Um, there's anger, and it's kind of fueling up a little bit. And so now we have eighty thousand of them all gathered in one location. Uh, to have a sense of, of God delivered us once. Okay, once, okay. Won't he deliver us again? Amen. So that's, that's in their minds. So we're celebrating the Passover this time, and God delivered them from Egypt. And now, now the people were, were of, of, of God and asking him, God, is, is the Messiah coming again? And he's going to come to overthrow the oppressive government. And that's, that's um, what's in them at the time. So the context that you need to understand that Jesus is, you got to understand that context as what the crowd was thinking when Jesus had made his entry into Jerusalem. So the crowd was looking for a king that's going to stop this oppression. They were looking for a king, a king who is politically going to relieve them from the oppression that they're going through. But Jesus, he came came in peace. He, and he, he came on a donkey. Right. If he would have been that king that was going to that, he came on that stallion. Right. You know? Right. He went down to the temple yeah. instead of going up to the throne. All right now. Huh? All right now. So the king that they were looking for was that king that was going to be on that stallion, that was going to be on that throne. And they was looking for that little, but not that spiritual king. Yeah. All right now. Right. So spiritually, that's, that's unfortunately, but if you look back at the scriptures from Zechariah and going back, he was telling them this 500 years before. Right he coming. He coming in peace. Yeah. And he going to give you this everlasting. He's telling them this. Yeah. They knew it. But that flesh that I talked yeah. about earlier, yeah. that part of us that was in it for me, yeah. what he going to do for me, All right. that overwhelmed the crowd. That yeah. overwhelmed the people. And who yeah. better to play it but those high priests and Pharisees who know how to pull them strings, mm -hmm. huh? Who know how to tell and say, well, this is this, yeah. this is this, and give them that bad information and get the people riled up and pumped up to turn against Jesus. Yeah. 
So the crown, the crown, as I'm saying, they know the history of, of God. And they know it, and it's shown in Psalms 118. They know it in Zechariah 9. They know these Old Testament passages. In Psalms, uh, in Psalms, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And he is his steadfast love endures forever. Yeah. Then verse 26 says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Yeah. You know, you know that Zechariah tells us tells that a king is going to come on a donkey. And that he's going, going to be like a king. Going to be like a king where that's going, going to overthrow. And we're going to throw down our coats. And the king destroyed the people, and the king is the king is going to destroy people. Do you see that? Is what's happening with them, and they are hanging on to this Messiah Christ mm -hmm. that they are looking for. Yeah. So the crowd sees the prophecy being fulfilled. They see something that they're they're setting on the city of David. Now you got to remember this Jerusalem. This is where David was made king. There was, a, there, was, there was Solomon who got on a mule, the son of David, who was anointed the king just outside the valley of Kid, Kidron, mm -hmm. right outside of Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And here is Jesus of the Mount of Olives coming down to Jerusalem, and they're going, oh, it's coming. Oh, he's the descendant of David. Yeah. He's, he's the descendant right into the, right, uh, right into the city. He's going to take, take his place, his rightful place in it. So this king is coming to take his throne. This king will kill our oppressors. This king will make us dominant ones. This king will be triumphant. And that and that's wrong. That's what's going on in the heart of the people. Yeah. You have to understand. You have to understand that that doesn't make sense. Jesus comes riding on a donkey because he knows the Old Testament passages. And it's prophetic. And coming as the Messiah in chapter chapter 9 verse it says it is great it says rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout aloud daughter and did you salam behold your king is coming righteous and having salvation and he is humble right. and mounted on the dock of a coat and that was in the scripture but they're like no oh, we don't want to, we want to make this you can see that now too people want to turn things around so it benefits them and it's already in the scriptures so, you know, mm -hmm. so how do you know that in the Gospels, nowhere in the Gospel have you seen Jesus writing anything? He walked everywhere. All right. He did. Mm -hmm. So he was, and he did it because he wanted to fulfill the prophecy. Yeah. So that journey that he took to um, the journey that he took to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. it was a half mile journey. Mm -hmm. So they were celebrating, and they took their time too. Mm -hmm. They celebrated and they celebrated. Leaves, I mean, palms were coming down, and and they were able to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So. The 80,000 people in that one location was celebrating the Passover and it was a bunch of lambs. <laughs> you sure it's a bunch of lambs dying because they were sacrificing the lambs, right. tens of thousands of lambs, um, and the blood was shed. So the blood was shed is not going to happen in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover when Jesus comes prophetically on a donkey and he goes straight to the temple, as I said earlier. So, when he goes to the temple, what he was telling everybody was, in regards to the Passover, I am your lamb. I am to be sacrificed. Mm -hmm. So we have to see what's coming, that he was coming to make peace. The only way to make peace is through death. All right. But to swallow up death and his own also come into the state that he is king of the world. All right. So Jesus says, now I am to bring peace to humanity and reconcile you to God, that you might have life in God, and that you might have life in God. At the end of at the end, the crowd says, Gives up, give us the murderer, give us the thief, give us something. 
Look at the king. Look at this king. You can kill this one. They didn't want to accept it. They didn't want to accept Jesus at that time. Um, if you would um, just mark this scripture down, Luke 19, 41 through 47. And I'm just going to paraphrase it so it'll, you can understand what's going on. So Jesus, he wept over the city and said, if you had known what this day would bring, it would bring you peace on this day. And you didn't even recognize it. You didn't even recognize it. So um, I'll let you read more about that on your own. Allow, but with that said, we want to make sure that when Jesus offers himself to us, that we recognize him. We recognize that he's the king of peace. We recognize that, that he came He came and died for our sins to give us uh, salvation. We need to recognize that. We want to, and the, the reason why he did it was to allow us, Jesus allowed, he did it because he allowed um, us to get into the deepest part of humanity. He absorbed all the hatred mm -hmm. all right. when he died, right? All, right? all the anger that consumes the human heart. And upon himself, he brings us peace. <clears throat> this week, as you consider, that you consider it. Don't separate the Trinity. So I'm saying it. Jesus as the Father, as separate as, as um, separate from his Father's plan. Jesus, he knew this going in. Yeah. He knew it. He had a choice. Well, I can change the script, Father. Yeah. But God was in his whole plan. Yeah. All right, now. So as we go into this week, don't, don't separate that. No, no, no. This was this was prophesied on what they needed to do. So um, Jesus Himself saved saved us from our anger, our wrath, and He saved us from from uh, us. When we choose to give Him, give it to Him, we destroy ourselves and we let each other stand together. Amen. So that's my message. Amen.
And once that happens, God does the rest. It's on him. He's the one who gives us what we need to be saved. And then he teaches us. He guides us. People will hear you say one thing. People will hear you saying another. But it's for their benefit because it's coming from the Holy Ghost. And he's teaching them what they need to learn so that they can grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I know this has been a terrific study for you. It's been a wonderful message for us. Amen. Amen. How many is the, the, the city population small over 80,000? Because Jesus is the best one to do PR. God knows how to do PR better than anybody. You want people to come to Jesus? Tell them. Word of mouth is better than anything else you got. So Twitter can't do it. Facebook can't do it. Whatever you're doing in your home can't do it. He meant for us to hear the word preached through somebody to be saved. Amen. I mean, that's a, I, I wrote so many things that are just amazing to me. Amen. I just really love that message. Amen. Amen. It's the best witness. We need a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the fact that this particular, this particular section of scripture is in all four gospels. It's very important. And David said that over and over. We need to recognize when God wants, he repeats. Repetition is good teaching. Yes. Bishop used to tell us that. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Just so many good things about Palm Sunday. So many important things. And it's like that when you're preparing for the things of God. you got to be prepared. Amen? And we want people to be prepared for eternal life. And you don't want to go into eternal life without God. So if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you need to come. We all need to pray and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Amen. That's preparation. Amen. That's how I know I can go ahead and die anytime. I'll be all right. Because I know I'm saved. You may not know it. You may not think it. You may not say that girl in your chair, right? But I'll tell you what, I know I'm saved. So I know I'm going on to be unprepared. We want everybody. That's God's heart. He wanted all to be saved and come to repentance. So he sent his son who had to come on Palm Sunday, ride into Jerusalem where they were planning to kill him. And he knew it. He knew it. And he went anyhow. And he did it God's way. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. He did it God's way. So many times we want to run our life like we want to go. Oh, you got me up here preaching now. Second message. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Way back in the Zoom. Woo, he went all the way back and said it was prophesied. Yes. Yeah, way back in, in Zechariah, it was prophesied. And he talks about how they had palms on the outside of the building when they went to build the temple. Read it for yourself. That's what David said, read it for yourself. And on one side, he had the people facing the palm. And on the other side, he had the lion. Who was the lion? The lamb. The tribe of Judah. That's Jesus yeah. facing the people. Yeah. Because he came to bring us peace. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah. We want somebody to be saved. We want somebody to change their ways. If you're already saved, change your ways. Well, how do you change your ways? Do what God said to Do it God's way. You can do that. You can do that. Because you'll hear him whispering in your ear, go this way. Go that way. Don't do this. Do that. That's how God is. Amen? Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Let's give God a hand clap.
celebrate it. And Wednesday we have 6 a.m., 12 noon, or 6 p.m. prayer, and we are going to pray through the palms, through this holy week. On Thursday, everybody that's going to be doing something on Thursday, wave your hand like you really do care. Amen. We got folks that are going to be here on Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m. to 7. We're going to read the scriptures through the stations of, of Christ. If you don't know what they are, come. I'll hand out a, a description so you know. And then Friday, we're going to have Good Friday service, and we're going to review the seven last words, and we got some exciting speakers, people that you haven't heard before. I know you haven't heard David Kill Jr. <laughs> That's David M. Kill. That's David. David's going to bring the first word. Amen, somebody. I didn't twist this on my video. Y'all know I might have wanted to, but I didn't. Amen. And we have Dana Miner. She's going to be bringing the word. Amen. Amen. And we have uh, Elder Tony Miller coming from uh, our RC3 Restoration Christian Church. And he's going to bring the word. And it's going to be some of the rest of us, too. You know, like your usual, your old faithful. But we're going to be here. Amen. And we're so excited. We're going to sing hymns. And we're going to pay attention to God. Amen. Amen. And then Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning. <laughs> That's Al Roker. On Sunday morning, <laughs> we're going to uh, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to walk through this Passion Week. Feel what Jesus felt. Feel what the people felt. David did such a good job of telling them this is what it was like for the people. And then we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and our own pastor. Pastor Mike's going to bring the word. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's all plan to be here, get word of mouth, and invite folks to come. I say if you can go out shopping, go to the doctor, go to the show movies, go to the restaurant, you can bring yourself to church. Yeah. And so we decided we're not going to have Facebook Live on, on Easter Sunday morning. Jesus came all the way from heaven down. And you can come across town. Amen. <laughs> yes, you can. And we're looking for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's thank God again.